All right, so this week we're going to start off by looking at Timothy Finley's novel, uh, The Wars. Uh, and uh, this book uh, will be a part of our uh, look at um, military masculinity and war literature. Uh, so let's start a little bit uh, by looking at the author of this book, Timothy Finley. Uh, so he is a Canadian novelist and playwright, and he actually started out as an actor. So he became a writer uh, in sort of the later, laugh, or later half of his life, and he published The Wars in 1977. Uh, when it came out, it was uh, you know, more controversial than it would have been if it was released today. Uh, but there was, it's still somewhat of a controversial novel, which is interesting. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But um, he won a Governor General Award for uh, The Wars. And it's one of his more uh, sort of well-known uh, novels. So in the novel, we have uh, the perspective of um, a narrator uh, researching the past, the life of Robert Ross, and uh, they're sort of piecing together uh, who this man was, uh, a soldier during World War I, and uh, kind of sort of un trying to understand or come to grips with who this uh, man, Robert Ross, really was. And he did something controversial, and his reputation, his legacy is controversial. Um, but this historian, the narrator, wants to learn uh, the truth of what really happened. Um, so we get to learn who Robert Ross was through sort of bits and pieces. Um, uh, and we get to know uh, what really happened uh, during the war, uh, the war. Timothy Finley writes in uh, a way that conveys the sort of realities of warfare, uh, the, what the experience could have been like for a young man um, going and experiencing that for the first time. Uh, so we have the character of Robert Ross struggling, not just with the physically uh, hardships like the physical hardships of uh, the trench warfare of World War One but mostly he sort of also struggles with the emotional and psychological aspects of warfare. So we get to see uh, soldiers who are not that stoic, uh, cold, tough exterior but these are young, sensitive, intelligent men who are struggling with the realities of uh, unspeakable horrors that you know we can't even imagine um, so they're struggling mentally emotionally as well as physically so we'll see that in uh, this novel and uh, I think the novel itself has a sort of strong anti-war sentiment right so it doesn't glorify the war or glamorize it it's really a tragic story so uh, I think it's a bit of a tearjerker myself, but I have a sort of soft spot for stories which feature animals and I can't, you know, stomach seeing an animal hurt even if I'm reading about it. So uh, this novel always like makes me tear up. Uh, but the strong anti-war sentiment of the narrative uh, sort of is conveyed um, through the lost innocence of these young men. Um, and there's sort of, un, you know, things that Robert Ross goes through that are, you know, so unimaginably horrific uh, that, you know, it's really um, hard to read in some spots. Uh, so he goes through things that we can't even, you know, want to imagine uh, having to go through. Uh, so I won't give you spoilers, but he does endure uh, physical and psychologically traumatic events. Uh, uh, on the battlefield and off the battlefield as well. So he's a character who is brutally wounded uh, and traumatized by his experience. Um, so uh, it's not just a tearjerker, but it's also been a very sort of controversial book. Uh, and this is kind of an interesting um, aspect of it as well. Uh, so it's been very critically acclaimed. It won the Governor General Award, but this still, you know, some people have found that it's, uh, or have 
argue that it's uh, inappropriate for younger audiences. And there was this case uh, in Ontario where a group of parents wanted to ban this book from being taught in uh, a high school for grade 12 English class. Uh, and they just said there was too much graphic uh, violence and sexuality. So there are scenes that are um, graphically sexual and violent. Um, so there's a rape scene, there's uh, a scene featuring sort of uh, two men um, together and, uh, you know, scenes that maybe some people would find uh, inappropriate or just not age appropriate, I guess, for uh, grade 12 students. But, I mean, I think the message uh, of the novel sort of stands um, or is communicated through some of these scenes, right? So uh, in some cases, it could be hard to read because of uh, violence. Um, but it's never gratuitous, in my opinion. Um, it's part of Finley's way of uh, communicating his anti-war message and showing uh, a kind of lost innocence or loss of innocence for these uh, young men. But it's not all sad. There are sort of some elements of hopefulness and inspiration uh, that can be found, uh, especially in the sort of the the overall sort of spirit of Robert Ross and what he stands for. Um, you know, he's beaten down, uh, victimized by this system, and yet his spirit, his uh, sense of passion and, uh, you know, life spirit is uh, strong uh, all the way through. So uh, he is never fully broken down. He continues to sort of survive and endure. Uh, even beyond, you know, unspeakable horrors, um, but he uh, continues on. So his spirit is, you know, very much um, the inspirational or hopeful part of uh, this narrative. In terms of genre, we could we can place uh, the wars uh, as an example of historical metafiction, and this is a literary term uh, that we use to describe. Uh, contemporary or postmodern novels that uh, incorporate both real historical events, real historical figures, um, in addition to uh, fa uh, fictional elements too. So Robert Ross is a fictional character. Uh, all of the other um, soldiers are fictional, uh, yet the circumstances uh, there are, you know, real care or real sort of um, political figures mentioned, and the historical events are, of course, um, based in reality. Uh, so we have a little bit of blurring of fact and fiction. So this could be uh, an example of historical metafiction. So anytime you have uh, fact and fiction blurred together, and the author is sort of showing us how. A story is uh, put together, uh, the process of writing it, uh, piecing it together, uh, you have a good example of historical metafiction. Uh, so in this uh, narrative, our uh, narrator is, there's a sort of anonymous narrator, they're never named, but it seems to be like a historian or somebody researching uh, Robert Ross. And they're trying to find, uh, compile evidence, uh, historical documents, uh, go through the archives and find anything that they can about uh, Robert Ross, who he was. And it's really about this question of, you know, who is Robert Ross? What is his legacy? Is he, uh, you know, what did he do? and how should he be remembered. Uh, so he's somewhat of a controversial character and we uh, figure this out pretty uh, fast, but the, what he did uh, is never fully clear to us until uh, the end of the novel where we get uh, you know, the part of the story where uh, what he actually did uh, is portrayed. Um, so the narrator has to sort of track down Anybody who uh, was friends or who knew Robert Ross, 
um, and uh, try to understand or interview these people and get a more complete story about uh, who this person was. Uh, so they go through archives, uh, look through newspapers, they find photographs, and then they also track down individuals. So there would be the nurse, Marion Turner, who uh, cared for Robert Ross at one point. Uh, there's Juliet de Orsi, who, as a young girl, uh, knew Robert Ross. Uh, so they are also part of the story. So they're survivors. They're uh, they're still living, and they knew Robert Ross uh, more personally, more intimately. Uh, so they have a little bit more information uh, than uh, just some of the news stories that are out there. So this narrator has to sort of piece together, find uh, documents, source material, and reconstruct the life of Robert Ross. So there will be, you know, all these um, indications of research. Uh, so say on page seven, uh, just the structure of the narrative suggests a kind of researching on behalf of uh, this narrator, and she actually involves the reader as if it's you doing uh, the research. So you begin at the archives with photographs, Robert and Rowena, rabbits and wheelchairs, children, dogs, and horses. Uh, so we have boxes and boxes of snapshots and portraits, maps and letters, cablegrams and clippings from the papers. So that's where you would start. So if you were researching, say, um, you know, one of your relatives who served in the war, where would you start if you wanted to find out, you know, they're no longer alive, so you have to find out who they are. And maybe you'll start at the, you know, photographs that existed that are in old, you know, dusty boxes at the top of your closet or... Uh, maybe there's newspaper clippings about that uh, person at that time. So that's what this narrator is doing. They're trying to piece together a coherent life story of Robert Ross uh, from bits and pieces and fragments and whatever they can uh, find out about this person who remains a mystery and controversial figure. Metafiction is... Also, uh, sort of, it communicates uh, in a way that it's writing about writing, right? It's writing about uh, how we piece together a story. So it's really putting into the foreground the process of piecing together a narrative, a life story. Uh, and in a way, it gets us closer to the truth than if you just read say, a history book about World War I. Uh, so even this uh, sort of snapshots of Robert Ross give us a little bit more truth or get closer to uh, the reality of what happened than a newspaper report would. Um, so we get a sense uh, through O'Brien's uh, writing that, uh, you know, the past the history books somewhat fail to really represent uh, the reality of uh, the the men who lost their lives in the war, right? They, they become kind of a statistic, um, one of, you know, thousands of men who lost their lives. Uh, we often sort of forget the fact that these were, you know, individuals who um, lost their life and they had, you know, uh, you know, characteristics and personalities and passions and hobbies and, uh, you know, talents and skills that, you know, we don't recognize because they're just remembered as a soldier uh, who served their country, uh, who lost their life. So the sort of details and personal uh, aspects are um, what Finley is sort of showing us uh, and having... Um, this narrator sort of find out about just one soldier, Robert Ross, but he really comes to represent a whole generation of young men who uh, gave up their lives or their innocence uh, to serve their country. Um, so we have, uh, you know, the fact that uh, Robert Ross is not uh, a straightforward character as well. He he remains somewhat of a, a mystery, and we're sort of uh, brought along with the narrator to, to discover who this young man was and what exactly he did uh, that was so controversial.